Hello and welcome back, or welcome if you're new here. Please consider subscribing to support my channel, it really does help. We have a Discord and other things you can find below. But all that ado, let's get into it. So, a lot of people have been asking about my settings for my graphics card since I have a nice new shiny 4080. And this is basically what I've settled on. There is a couple of things I am not so keen on, but I just feel like I should probably go through and explain it on an individual basis. So this is pretty much what I had before on my other graphics card. I've turned the FX details onto high because, you know, why not? Like, it's, what's the point of getting a better graphics card if you're not going to actually look at some of the stuff? So T tree texture is low because I, I don't really care. Unit detail, again, it's going to affect your VFX and everything because it's your battle. Depth of field, I don't really like. Screen reflector space, I don't really care about. Light quality, that really doesn't really matter. Corpse permadeath, I kind of like, and I had to turn this off on my graphics card because it was it was pretty draining on the system, keeping all the corpses in place. Texture quality, now this one, this is the one that really grinds my gears because this is actually linked to the campaign world map as well as your battles. I wish they'd split this into two options because I don't really care how the world looks, but if I turn this down, it's going to turn down all the textures used in the battles, which is annoying. And I assume it was just an attempt to save space to a like, will just have all the textures rendered the same way using the same files. So shadows, I don't care about. Grass, I don't care about. Uh, terrain detail, I've put on low, but you could probably put that up to medium, to be honest. And building details, I've put that on low, because honestly, even on low, it looks pretty decent. Unit size, ultra, obviously. I've turned portals on because some people have been tasking me to turn it on. And fog, I give I give zero shits about. And actually, it's great out for some reason. Um, so, unlimited memory. This is only ever useful if you have a terrible PC. My old PC with my 1080 turned this on because that was that. These, I don't care about. And these, if I'm being honest, I don't care about. But turning them off drops like 0 0.01 frames. So it makes extremely little difference. So I've turned them on because if you can have it look a bit better, why not? If it's going to have zero effect on your actual system's performance. Now we're just going to run a benchmark and then I'm going to run another benchmark and I'm going to explain something. So bear with me while I power this up. Now you should see it's pretty fast. I'm using an MSAT 2. So it's, it's pretty speedy compared to some people. And if you look at the frames, like this, this goes up to about 350 if I'm not recording in OBS. So like there's things to consider. Your other applications on your system are gonna have a direct impact on your FPS count. But honestly, I think like 180 FPS is probably like the sweet spot or games right because even then like streaming it to youtube you're, you're not going to see 180 on your end it's going to be compressed down using the voodoo magic of obs and youtube so you know you're, you're probably getting like a condensed compressed 60 fps on your end so you don't actually really see this much so arguably some of this fps is kind of wasted and also it's using 99% of my GPU, which seems a bit ridiculous. A lot of game developers seem to be of the notion that let's just use everything that's available, because why not, right? It saves them putting the heating on. They can just sit next to their PC. It actually drops to 145 there, which I'm surprised, actually. But I guess it's because I've got OBS on. I do love me some kids left. And you see, as we're coming in here, it's about 170. This is recording it to my hard drive. So the average there is 191 FPS. That's roughly what it's going to be, what you see on stream. Now I'm going to make a change, so I will be right back. And we're back. So, 
This is actually a 2K as well, just so you should know, because I'm on a 4K monitor, which I wish I had never bought. Like, I thought people would embrace 4K much sooner than they actually did. I've got three 4K monitors, and it feels like, well, I'll have them for a long time, unless they come out with something much better, much more energy efficient. So yeah, we're on 2K. So all this is the same. I haven't actually changed anything in Total War. What I've done is I've changed something on my computer. So now we're going to run the benchmark again. We're going to have a look at the FPS. Oh, look, there's like a near constant 180 FPS. I wonder how that happened. It will be interesting to see if you guys can actually see any changes between the first part of this video and this part of this video, graphically. And I do a lot of PC optimization, so I've been over and airing about recording some things on how I set up my entire PC. So if people are interested in that, please let me know in the comments and I will. I can do some more videos. The, the tech knowledge stuck in my brain is available should people wish to uh, ask questions and such. It still went down there so it drops. It drops a little but we're still over 120 FPS which is pretty good. Come to bears. Give love. Oh, look at that. 171 FPS. Now, this is actually 180. Um, what I have actually done is I've changed something on my computer. So I'm just going to pause this while I grab the other screen. So, as you can see here, this is the NVIDIA control panel. If you go to 3D management, you can actually set a max FPS. And you're probably wondering, like, why bother do this? What is the actual point of doing this? Well, this game runs pretty hot and heavy. So what actually happens is you end up running at 100 DPU load. And that's why you get those FPS spikes, right? Because if your graphics card is at 100% load, and then something else happens and it has to render that thing, it suddenly goes, I need to render the other thing. And then it has a bit of a dip in performance and you notice the dip in performance. So actually some people have said to me, why not just run at 120 FPS? So just out of curiosity right now, this is the first time I've done this. I'm just gonna pop this down to 120 so you guys can see the difference. So this is technically a three part video, I guess, at this point. Okay, here we go. So we're now at 120 FPS and we're gonna rerun the simulation. And yes, if you're eagle eyes, you will have noticed that I did actually pause the video because in order for these changes to take effect, you have to completely close down the game and reload it. And I don't see the point in you guys having to watch that. So we're now set to 120 FPS, so let's see what the quality is like. Oh look, 120 FPS. And just so you guys know, it's currently running at 65% CPU load. Sorry, GPU load. I keep confusing those two. The graphics card is at 65% load. 
So whenever we're doing these special effects and VFXs and loading these additional files, there should be plenty of room on the graphics card to load them without it going eh! see a bit of distortion with the blood spatter. I'm not sure that's down to the frames though. I think that's down to some of the other settings. And if you look there, 119 FPS. That is pretty solid. So yeah, let me know what you think. I hope that this helps you. Maybe this can help you with quality of life improvements for your campaign. I'm always open to questions and ideas. And uh, since you've watched all the way to the very end, you can leave thanks on this video or you can join and become an official part of the Rat Pack and help support me make content for the channel. I'm not going to say specific content because I'm going to dibble dabble into different things at some point, I imagine. I do have a massive affection for Warhammer. Let's be real, like Warhammer 3 could never fail as a franchise because the Warhammer franchise is something that people have wanted from tabletop for forever. And then the way they killed 8th edition, it was like the only thing that we had right it was like oh my god we finally got to play 8th edition again online with our friends and it was it was just a dream come true really like so ca was on the money like this game is unfailable and whatever people say about the current state of warhammer like it's gonna get better like you guys clearly weren't early adapters of warhammer 1 and warhammer 2 the, the launch of warhammer 2 was a fucking train wreck um, but they still fixed it and whoever works at CA whoever does these massive optimizations whoever turned the turn timer from I can go read a chapter of a book or I can go hoover up and wash some parts and make up tea to it takes like a minute to run through the end turn timer that guy that guy deserves to be a manager or something or in charge of the design department because he has single-handedly optimized the hell out of this game or Maybe it's not a person, maybe it's a group of people, or maybe it's not a he. But what I'm saying is, thank you, whoever you are, if you ever see this video. Like, you've done more for low-end gamers than I ever could with my tiny, tiny bits of tips and tricks. So, on that note, I'll leave you. I wish you good fortune in all your wars to come. You can always join the Discord if you want. I'm always after more people to talk tech with. I'll see you next time.